Hello fellow travelers, it is I, the Domotaku. Today, we're going to be talking about the latest news in Genshin Impact. The 1.3 version update, the all that glitters update. But uh, yeah, so the 1.3 livestream happened today. I um, caught the the Chinese one at like 4am in the morning, although I kind of fell asleep. I woke up at 5 and saw the news from like other people on social media. And I went back to sleep, and then I finally caught the actual English one. But I kind of got all the specifics and details after looking over it in English. So let's get discussing about the 1.3 update coming February 3rd. And the biggest thing I have to say about this update is... No, no! Why? Yo, man, I have to be real honest here. I was a little bit disappointed that Hu Tao is not announced with Zhao. But, you know, on the positive side to that, if anyone's trying to save for Hu Tao... You can technically save because unless you're trying to for Zhao, then that's a different story. But um, it's really interesting this whole dilemma that we have here because it brings a whole new like possibilities and just questions, right? So of course for the 1.3 update, we have Zhao confirmed for the Lantern Festival, and Zhao will be released on the third with the update, and then two weeks after on February 17, we have a Kuching raid up banner. Which is really weird, and this opens up so much possibilities that I want to think about and discuss. But um, we'll get on with Xiao first and his character. So I was looking into Xiao's character, and you know, honestly, he is pretty strong. He looks really nice. He seems mostly as a DPS because all of his skills and kit lean towards doing damage, right? His, you know, he's a polearm user. He has some nice uh, attack animations with his spear, and his uh, charge attack launches people up. And then his skill is like a dash forward dealing a Nemo damage, which is really awesome. You can also do that in midair, so you can like kind of traverse a little bit, which is really nice. And um, his alt, his alt does this form basically with his mask on. And then in this form, he's taking, his draining is HP, but then his attacks and animation and movement speed, all that stuff is boosted and higher up. So highly DPS orientated ultimate or elemental burst. And um, usually with the alt, you want to, he gets like higher jump range, so he can jump, and then plunge attack. And his special kit, from what I heard from the live uh, pod uh, podcast, live stream, is that uh, Zhao has a special, or I don't know if it's a special characteristic, but he has a characteristic where the higher he plunge attacks from, the more damage it deals. I don't know if that's true for like all the other characters. I was talking about it with someone I know. It's like, oh yeah, like, you know, Punch attacks are more damage when you're higher up, but then usually you still get hit, right? Damage, right? So I don't know if that's the case. I'm going to have to test this myself when I'm just playing the game in general. But I think it's a unique characteristic for Zhao to have more damage scaling from like how high he plunge attacks from. And he also does not take damage from such high plunge attacks. In the live stream, they mentioned that you can jump off from the highest point of Mount Hulao and then plunge attack and he won't take any damage which is insane. It's really insane because I don't know of any character that has such a thing like that. Or if that's just a mechanic in general for the game. But with that, it combos really well with his alt. And with his alt, you really want to jump high, plunge attack, and just keep doing it. As uh, people have seen in beta test footage and stuff. So, really nice, honestly. The only downside to his alt is the fact that it does drain HP. So you do want to be keeping a healer have the e, uh, what we call the NRE available and stuff. Keeping his health up is kind of easy to do and you can work around it. I don't know exactly the rate of how much health depletes and his attack gets boosted. We all know the numbers of such things. But overall, I still see him as a really cool character that does a lot of damage. And if you're looking for a Nemo, then you know it's pretty cool because there's only like what two Nemo characters out so far with Sucrose and the MC. If you guys miss Venti and Venti was like beginning of the game so Zhao is a honestly a good addition to the game can't wait to see what he does and you know personally for me I was supposed to be saving for Hu Tao but you know who knows we'll see what happens in these next um three four weeks of the uh, 1.3 so after that we have Kuching and Kuching's appearance as a event limited banner is very questionable it brings up a lot of speculation right so we have Kuching who is a non-limited character having a rate up in the character event wish right so this is kind of interesting as a fact because i don't know it's kind of, it's really weird because you know it's like okay for one this brings about the possibilities of all the other non-limited five-star characters getting rate up banners in the future so chi chi mona 
Dilla, Kajin, all of them have like potential to be rated up in the future from now on. That is confirmed through Kuchin getting a rate up being the first. And with that, you know, it's, I believe they, I don't remember what they said exactly, but for, I believe they said that she's going to be, you know, in the character event wish, right? So she's not part of the, you know, separate banner or anything like that, but she's going to be the rated up character for the character event wish. And so let's say you try to roll for her, right? And if you get Kuching, I'm assuming that that's the care, the, you know, the actual guaranteed character, right? And then the next one you get, uh, you five stars you get after it was 50 50. But it's like, I'm thinking about Kuching's banner. And honestly, it's really good for anyone who really wants to try to go for Kuching. That's totally fine. And, um, you know, if you want to get go for Kuching and save her, then that's totally fine as well. I have her already, so, you know, no need to roll for Constellations because free to play, or not free to play, the Dolphin as much as I can. But, um, you know, assuming you roll for Kuching, right? You get Kuching, and then your next one's a 50 50 kind of thing. But then, like, for people that have Kuching, it's kind of awkward because, like, it's basically saying, you do you want to roll for this limited character on the left, Zhao? Or do you want to roll for this character that you can get spooked by in the future, like Kuching, right? And I understand that people may not have Kuching and they want to roll for Kuching, that's totally fine. But that's how I see it as someone who owns Kuching already. is like, if I had to roll for someone in these two, like, I would definitely roll for Zhao because, you know, he's limited. So after his two weeks of raid up, he's gone until he gets rerun eventually. But Kuching can always spook you every single 90 rolls and pity and stuff in the standard banner and the character event wish banner. So there's not too much of a, what you want to call it, a too much of a necessity to roll for Kuching, right? That's kind of how I see it. But then, like I said, if you totally want to roll for Kuching, then that's totally great because she's a strong character and I highly suggest rolling for her. If you choose her over Zhao, then that's totally fine. But um, it's just an interesting case seeing uh, Kuching being rated up. That makes me question how further or you know newer updates will happen, like 1.4 and 5, where supposedly we we're supposed to get Hu Tao <laughs> this one, but now supposedly hypotheticals, right? 1.4 will have Hu Tao, and then if they don't have a new character with 1.4 with Hu Tao, then they will have someone else like Kuching to replace her. So then, you know, Chi Chi, is there any other Li Yue, uh Five star characters, Dilik, Mona, Jean. No, that's basically it. Yeah, so it's one of those four. So if there was a Mona rate up banner, then you're damn straight as hell. I'm gonna roll for that shit because she's the last missing character I need in my my lineup of the non-limited people. And I could be finally like, hey Mona, you know? So that'll be interesting to see how the new banners come up. You know, I kinda asked for this back in the day when I didn't have Jean and stuff. It's like I want banners rate ups for the non-limited people because please you know stop giving me dillux spooks and now they finally do it and i'm just like ah oh, it's cooching first ah oh, whatever it's fine but you know interesting choice you know this uh shows potential for the future updates of genshin impact so that's pretty cool and um the bit next big thing to talk about with these two is that these banners are up for 14 days right at least from zhao to kuching zhao's february 3rd and then kuching is february 17 so that means his banner is up for two weeks but usually the standard for banners are that characters are up for three weeks around so this could implicate that maybe after so two weeks for zhao two weeks for kuching and then you know once the second week of kuching things end we get 1.4 immediately which is really faster than usual from if we think about it, because if each character is three weeks normally, and then the next update would be like six weeks, but then this one's four weeks, so it's doable, it's possible that we might get a faster update to 1.4 real soon. We'll see. Although, this 1.3 update may seem small because it's all focused on Liyue and the Lantern Festival, it still has a lot of good events and stuff to do. So, we'll talk on. The next thing to discuss about um, this, this event, the update, the actual Lantern Night Festival. So the Lantern Night Festival has four different, um, what do you call it, parts to it. So here's the first one I'm seeing here. All that glitters, the Lantern Night Tales, the theater mechanics, and the Zhao Market. So a lot of stuff to do in here. And we'll get into detail to these things as much as possible that I know of, in fact. Next thing we know, there is a campaign where Every single player can choose a four-star character of their choice, anyone from Liyue. So here's the roster. We've got Shangling, Xinyan, Beidou, Ningmong, Shinshu, and 
Chong Yun. I hope I did not butcher those names. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. But this is honestly really nice. Like, you know, I was wondering, like, when the next given character would be. They've given us Barbas. They've given us Shanglings. They've given us Fischl's. And, like, you know, it's cool that they're doing this. And this one is honestly, like, so damn nice for me and for probably a lot of people because rate-ups, right? So, I don't know exactly the requirements to be able to claim this, but by doing the event, by the end, you'll be able to claim one of these characters for yourself. And um, this is honestly really nice for people who don't have these characters or if you're trying to hit a certain constellation for someone. Like, for me personally, my choice would be Ning Wong because I have her at C0 and her C1 is nice. Everyone else, I looked at their constellations, and they don't really enhance them too much. So this is honestly really nice. And just having a free 4-star out of a variety of characters is really nice. Now, Shangling, you know, they give you one for free, so it's really not too necessary to, you know, go for her and stuff. And, you know, all these people have had raid-ups uh, recently, so you might have extras of them, and you want to do constellations of them. Really nice. Thanks a lot, MiHoYo. Pretty awesome. Now, next, we have, we have another event thing the five flushes of fortune um i don't know if this is a different event or it's part of the lantern ride festival but essentially from all getting at through this event you basically talk to this person they give you a new version of the camera or something like that and then you have to take pictures with it and by taking pictures of it you get these kind of photographs that are like you know certain um, types of photographs and you need to collect five different types of photographs to claim rewards and stuff from the person and this actually this event actually requires or not requires but like it helps to have friends where you can exchange photographs of different types because you can do that apparently from what i've seen in the footage and the, the live stream so i don't have too many friends who play like I'm, at the very most i have like two friends that i know who validly play and i can communicate with i don't really make friends with other people i met randomly online or just other content creators, but um, this will be an interesting event to see how to do. If you if you don't have friends on your friends list, you could probably you know look at on social media's discords, probably where it's at to help get get help and um, communicate with others. So interesting event. We'll see how the rewards are. Next up, we have this awesome event where the ley line overflow. So basically, what this thing is saying is that every single day or something like that, basically you can claim double the rewards from ley lines. So that's only the the money, the mora, and the character XP for 20 resin. So normally to do double rewards, you'd make a condensed resin, right? But no, for this like uh, time period, you can do a normal one, pay 20 resin, but you get double the rewards. So it's very free, and you can honestly stock up on a lot of mora and character XP, and you should probably take advantage of this. Like For this, I would probably just stop what I'm doing and just farm XP and mora, because it's discounted, it's free, and it's totally, you know, I need all that. I need character XP and money, so best of both worlds, right? And that's it for that small one. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to go. I think they said from my memory that you have like three times daily to do this or something like that. I don't know exactly, but we'll see. So next up, so here's a little summary of all the events that we got for 1.3 and the Lantern Festival. Um, so... I didn't actually talk about this one, but it's called the May Fortune Find You uh, event thing. Basically, what they're saying is that if you log in during the event time, which is the February 11th to the 26th, by the end of the login streak, you get like 10 intertwined fates. So that's really good if you're trying to summon for Zhao. Wait, actually, is, is it? 211 to 226. That might be cut off a bit because Zhao comes out February 3rd. But then his banner ends on the 17th because it's two weeks. So you might get cut off if you're trying to use these fi fates for Zhao or Kuching. But uh, interesting. Night Sky Grace. Um, I don't know what that is. Lantern Rite Gifts. Okay, it's probably part of the Lantern Rite Festival. I'm not exactly too sure. Like the different parts of the event we got. Let's see. The Liyue Send By Me. The free 4 star character. Five Flushes of Fortune. That's the camera event. So the Lantern Rite Zhao Market. I do not exactly know what to do for that event, but I oh no, that's, that's the current, that's the, the tower defense thing. I forgot about that. Um, I don't think I have a visual for this, or at least I think it's in here. So in the Lantern Rite event thing, here's the four different parts of the event. So you, you have the Lantern Rite Tales, which I believe are like quests from other NPCs. The theater mechanics, I believe, is the tower defense mini game thing that we got. So we had to learn a whole new mechanic of like doing tower defense stuff with like setting up elemental turrets and then you can also move around and hit the enemies too 
It's a really interesting thing, and I really like Genshin Impact because of the fact that they can just mix and match some random ass game element into this 2D adventure exploring game, so it's pretty cool and, you know, awesome to do something new. And then the Zhao Market, which I believe you exchange currencies, basically, from the, the theater mechanics and the event to exchange for rewards and stuff. So that's what I think it is, I'm pretty sure, because I have no visual of this tower defense thing. And the last thing on this other events preview thing is the bishops and where to find them. So this is an interesting new event that we will talk about because we get new bosses. So, uh, these things. If, um, if you ever see them around, spin dashing or break dancing, I just refer to them as Sonic the Hedgehogs because they kind of spin dash everywhere and roll, and then they might do a sideways break dance and shit, and I hate them so much because well, that break dance move is ridiculous, and I honestly just get hit by that all the time. But now, we have evolved forms of those dang Sonic the Hedgehogs. So there are two new forms, there's like a medium sized one which you can find around in the world and then this big dude, the Primo Geo Vichep, which is like, you know, chilling in this cave and um, I don't know to the extent of this boss whether it's going to be like Child or uh, the Wolf or Storm Terror, it's like a weekly boss or it's just a new like a flower kind of thing like you know the cubes and stuff in the world and it gives you rewards for farming it or just killing it I guess. We don't know what the specifics are for this uh, new enemy boss type, but it's there and there's events centered around it where I believe, from my memory, is that it's kind of like a commission style request where you um, send out characters like on expeditions to kill them. And then there's whole new other mechanics where you can like check out your uh, other friends support page and stuff. So that's not a whole new mechanic in general, but like yeah, you can view like on your profile you can set up your characters and people can view them and what you build on them their stats etc which is kind of cool it's basically like a support page for fgo so i kind of dig it you want to show off your fully built characters and your godly artifacts and stuff <laughs> so yeah that's that's one part of the event but i believe there's also sort of like a weekly or daily boss uh we call it a bounty kind of thing where you have to hunt down one of these things it can range from the maybe the small one, the, the medium sized one, or the big one. So, oh man, fighting those things is gonna be so damn. It's interesting. I'm I'm kind of excited yet kind of scared because number one, I hate the small ass Sonic the Hedgehogs already, but now you have to fight a medium sized one and a big daddy sized one. And the, actually, I believe I don't know if the medium sized one can do it, but the big sized one can take in other elements and stuff because it's geo so you can take in like fire ice lightning and stuff and use it on you too so that's i don't know how that's gonna work in his uh fight but um it's a mechanic to look out for and be careful with and um overall that's it for the 1.3 updates from my memory yeah i think that's it so this event i don't actually know the duration of this event but i would assume the whole 1.3 update continues into like you know with cooching and stuff so i have no clue how long this event would be or like the whole lantern ride festival would be but i would assume like about the whole size of february because the two banners for 1.3 cooching and zhao they will last from the february 3rd to like february the end of february something like that so yeah, this update, you know, I had very high expectations for this update, mostly with Hu Tao, you know, and probably a lot of people did. But, um, you know, overall, we're still getting a lot of stuff to do. And honestly, as someone who wants to roll for Hu Tao only and not Zhao, this is honestly screaming Primo Gems and Fates and materials for me to save. And then 1.4, I can finally roll for Hu Tao, hopefully she's announced for that. But uh, yeah, you know, if you're rolling for Zhao, then this is pretty exciting too. If you get to use him in this event and um, anyone trying to look for finally getting themselves a Kuching, I know a few people who really want Kuching and stuff. This is awesome. And um, yeah, honestly, you know, the game might be kind of like slowing down just a bit. Like we did just do the, the hypostasis event thing and it's just finished to be honest. And like, honestly for me right now there's not too much in the game going on right now but this honestly excites me a lot i can't i really can't wait to see and actually participate in this event and do all the cool things in here and stuff and also i forgot to mention that Zhao does have a character story uh event thing in the in this event lantern right thing and um, you want to do it during the festival because if you do it after the festival ends then you actually have to use a key and you have to be a higher adventure rank i think they said that his adventure rank is going to be 32 uh if you do it after the lantern festival and you need to use those commission keys and stuff but you know 
I have like three of those, so it's totally fine. But you know, it's just free to do it while the event's happening, so you get some character development with him and stuff while the lantern thing is going on. And that is about it for all the 1.3 news that I saw. Oh, I mean, I keep forgetting this, but it doesn't really apply to me. But it applies to all you Zongli players. Zongli is getting some buffs in 1.3. And unfortunately, if you do not roll for him, then um, he's not here for now until he gets rerun. But uh, I don't have Zongli, so this kind of didn't apply to me. It does apply to Brotaku, though. Brotaku was able to get Zongli, and he gets some free buffs in there, so that's pretty cool for him. So that is it for 1.3 as far as my memory serves and stuff in the game and stuff. I mean, they did release some soundtrack things, and that's awesome. I can't wait. I really like the soundtrack for the, the game and the, the trailers and stuff. But yeah, 1.3 is coming out once today. 20 seconds, so we got about a week and a half, about two weeks for the next updates. So that's pretty exciting. Um, roll for Ganyu if you're still trying for Ganyu while the time lasts and um let me know how you guys feel about this 1.3 update are you guys upset that hu tao is not here are you upset that it's like kuching on raid up and like a uh, new character and a repeat character what are your thoughts on the lantern right festival who are you guys are gonna pick for your free four star liyue character that'll be cool to know and um why are you getting them and that's it yeah so until 1.3, guys, we'll see what happens with this uh, event. Thank you all for listening or watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more videos in Genshin Impact, FGO, anime, the works. And I'll see you all in the next video. See you next time. Take care, fellow travelers. Show me what you got, you assassin, you. Do I have a catalyst, you? Where are you? <laughs> Consort you? I don't know what I'm saying. You? A saber? That's not you. Last ticket, show up you. Assassin. Servant. Spin. You also gold. Assassin. You?